This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. My name is Kevin Leary. I'm a uh, web content engineer at OpenView Venture Partners, and I also do freelance WordPress design and development in the Boston area. And I also have written a couple articles for Smashing Magazine, and I just like to fiddle a lot with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, WordPress and anything else related to front-end and somewhat back-end development. So today I'm going to go through advanced meta boxes. It's something I've been doing for a while. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk about a class that I use a lot to create these. It's a little bit faster than some of the built-in things that you find in WordPress. It's called the WP Alchemy Meta Box class. Uh, before I start, who here knows what a meta box is? Okay. How many people have created a meta box before? Alright. And would everyone here consider themselves a developer? Pretty much? Cool. Okay. If I'm getting too technical, just let me know. But it's somewhat of a technical topic. So basically, I'll just go through it really quick. It sounds like a lot of people already know what a meta box is, but basically a meta box is a box that you see inside the WordPress editor below the main visual editor. So you have the tiny MC visual editor, and then below it you have these small boxes that control content that's outside the realm of the main visual editor. So some examples are the excerpt, custom fields, revisions, a whole bunch of other ones. And a lot of these are built into WordPress. Um, so a really common one that a lot of people know about is the excerpt box. And that displays right below a post. You can see it right here. It's pretty basic. It just has a text area in it. Uh, you basically put text in here that's a very short description of a post, you hit update, that displays on your blog page, maybe it displays on an archive page, it depends how you set up your site or your theme. But this is a really basic example of a meta box, and WordPress uses these all over the place to control content outside the realm of this visual editor. I'll probably repeat that multiple times throughout the night, but it's, it's really valuable to be able to manage content that doesn't sit inside this main visual area, especially when it comes to custom content management. So there are also a lot of plugins that add these meta boxes, and they're a little bit more advanced. A good example of one that I use a lot is the Yoast SEO tool for WordPress. So this will add a meta box right below the visual editor that basically uh, allows you to manage metadata for search engines. So if you want to control the title and the description that shows up, I'm sure a lot of you have probably used it before. But you can do all sorts of things inside these meta boxes. Uh, I haven't added a focus keyword, but you can do a whole on-page analysis using this tool. It taps into a third-party API, it sends you back data about how well you're doing for on-page SEO. Uh, there's an advanced section that has some basic fields, but you still get you know like a multi-select drop-down and basically this is a really good example of a meta box that allows you to manage part of a page that's nowhere near the main content area. It's actually up in the head of the page. It's behind the scenes. You don't really see it. Search engines see it. Uh, and this concept can be applied to a whole lot of different things to really customize a page template or a theme or a whole bunch of other things. So, WordPress sort of has this mold, uh, and I've been working with it for over five years, and unfortunately, sometimes it gets a bad rap for it, but it has this mold where it's got a sidebar on the right and content on the left, and a lot of sites sort of follow that look. It's getting much better, but there are still some sites out there that people might sort of balk at creating with WordPress because they don't really think it's a fully-fledged CMS, even though it can be if you know how to use it right. So a couple examples, one would be the Google Ventures redesign, which was last year. You see pages like this, which just do not have content on the left, don't have a sidebar. They've got um, listed features that are into like two columns. They're all based on a grid system. How would you, if you were developing a theme right now, manage this in WordPress? Does anyone know? Custom posts, types, and taxonomies. So you could do that. It would get a little hairy, though, if you had like 10 of these pages, right? 
depending on how you set it up, it would get a little bit complex and you have a post type for each one and then you have to put it in a taxonomy. And I guess when I say complex, I mean from a client's perspective or someone using the editor. A lot of times, in my experience, I've seen clients expect to be able to manage the content for a page on that page. I've totally done that, though. I've done post types where you can put them into this layout, but I think a meta box in certain circumstances works really well for us. So another good example is um, a newsletter landing page that I designed. This just uses Twitter Bootstrap. Again, it's a completely different layout. It doesn't really fit into a normal page area. You've got images. Um, you've got three columns. It's just an out, kind of an out-of-the-box WordPress layout. And you can manage all this with meta boxes. You can manage it with other things too, but meta boxes will work really well. Alright, so uh, there are a lot of ways to do this. There's an out-of-the-box, uh, there are ways to do it in WordPress, there's a function called add meta box, I believe it is, add underscore meta underscore box. And it's really good for certain circumstances, but depending on how many of them you want to create, and if you want to speed up your workflow a little bit, and what you want to put in these, sometimes it's nice to have a modular PHP class to work with, and you can instantiate, you can create new objects, or you can create objects of it, create objects from the class, and basically make your workflow a lot more automated. And then if you have updates, you can roll out updates to the core class. And that's why I choose to use the WP Alchemy Metabox class for this. So, basically, the WP Alchemy Metabox class is not a plugin. It's just a PHP class. So, it's hosted on GitHub. It's created by... Damas Beganoff, I think that's how you pronounce it. I've actually never met him, but... He created this class. It makes it very rapid to create these meta boxes. It makes it very easy. It's very well documented. All the documentation is on his site, sparinspace.com. And then when you get there, you just go to WP Alchemy at the top. And basically, he hosts the entire thing on GitHub. So to set up the meta box class, you just download it from GitHub. After you download it from GitHub, you'll get. Um, Well, I did have a folder here. Bear with me one minute. So after you download it from GitHub, you'll get this folder right here. And this folder suggests that you can put WP Alchemy inside of the WP Content folder and sort of put it next to your Themes folder, where like your Plugins folder would be. You can do that if you want. What I usually do to set up the class is I like to use a functionality plugin. So you can do it this way if you want. You can um, drop WP Alchemy inside of your WP Content folder, and then you can just include it in your Themer plugin. But for the purposes of this demo, which we're about to jump into, what I've done is I've put it in a functionality plugin that also includes some styles to just make these boxes look pretty nice. So here it is. So this. It's just an unofficial plugin. I haven't published it. I might publish it, but it um, basically includes the MetaBox class, a media access class, which lets you upload things with the media library, PLU upload script. It's built under WordPress, and it also includes like some less power CSS that makes the MetaBoxes look really nice, essentially. So. By activating this, I have access to this whole class, so I can build meta boxes with it from anywhere, from a plugin, from a theme. In this demonstration, I'll go through how to build them in a theme, but uh, you could easily just include this in a plugin if you're developing a plugin with a meta box, or you could put it right in your theme, theme folder if you wanted. So, if I dive right into my theme here, uh, one minute. I basically have a, an installation of a roots theme, which is just like a basic WordPress theme. And I have a couple meta boxes set up inside of it. I have a simple one, an advanced one, uh, kind of an example of how I would use it to manage some team profiles on a page. Um, hang on one second. I didn't have much time to prepare this, so I'm kind of jumping all over the place here. Okay. 
use Coda. Alright. Then I use uh, NetBeans. Cool. Okay, so now that I know I can use this class, right, basically to get it working, the first step that you have to take is to Basically, after you install the class, you have to create a form template, and that form template will let you control the content or form that displays inside of your MetaBox. So inside of this theme that I'm working with here, what I've done is I've just created a new folder called MetaBox, and inside of this folder, I have my templates all set up for my MetaBox. So this template here is just a really simple MetaBox. It's just got an input field with a text with a uh, basic text input. So this template here, once I set up a meta box using the code that we're about to go through, this is what will show up inside of my meta box in my theme. So now that I have the template, what I basically have to do is tell WordPress that I want to create a meta box with this template file. And normally you do this in your functions.php file in your theme, but this theme that I'm using has a custom.php file, which is just included in the functions file. It's basically the same thing as a functions.php file. So basically this code that you see right here sets up our meta box. So it's six lines, and it does pretty much all the work for us. So it's much faster than using the add meta box that's built into WordPress. And it's really easy to reuse certain meta boxes from project to project. So what I basically do is I just define a variable. I instantiate this class to the variable, and then I control all my settings right here. So the ID of the meta box that you see here is used to store the data. So this needs to be unique for each meta box that you create. If it's not, there will be a collision, and your data won't quite match up. You'll get data coming into one place and shouldn't be in one place, and it won't, won't really work. So the title is what you actually see inside of WordPress. So I'll actually open this up and show you what this looks like. So if I go into Pages here, and I open up this simple example page, this is the meta box right here that we have. So basically all I needed to do to create this was include the class. Create a template, which is right here. And then define a meta box, which pulls in the template. So the template is another option here, and that's where I tell WordPress which templates actually pull in. For the MetaBox, and then exclude template is just something for the purposes of this demo. It's kind of an extra option. You don't really need this if you're using it in production. So basically, now that we have it set up, I can put um, whatever I want in here, hit update, and it saves. So this is stored inside the WordPress database. It's stored in an array, unless you don't want it to be. It's stored in a serialized array. But you can choose whether or not you want to do flat custom fields. It's up to you. But now that we've stored this, we can use this anywhere in our theme. So if I view the theme file for this page, I've just created a very basic table that outputs the name of the field and the value of the field. So it's not really that glamorous. It's kind of boring. It's pretty much a Hello World demo, but it has a lot of potential. So I'll go through real quick how I got this into the template. So I stored the data. I set up or I set up the meta box. I stored the data. Now, how did I get it into the template? Basically, you can do this on any template inside of your theme. The theme I'm using stores um, chunks of templates inside of a templates folder. So this could just be your page.php file. It doesn't have to be inside this templates folder, that's just the structure of this print scheme. And basically the, the 
code right here that you see is what pulls this into the thing. So inside of my custom.php, which is the same thing as my functions.php file, where I created this simple meta box, all I have to do is bring that global variable into this theme template, and then I have to sort of set it up. And to set it up, you use this, the meta method. And basically, once you call the meta method on that global variable, you're good to go. You can then bring in any of the data that you store in those fields. So basically what I've done here is I've just checked if there's data. If there is data, I output it into a table just so you can see what it looks like. So this is pretty boring. Like I said, I mean, there's not much to it. You can create all sorts of different fields with this tool. So if I go back into my pages here and I look at a full spec example, I can basically see another meta box here that has a text input. It's got a text area. It's got checkboxes. It's got a media library upload. So if I want something beyond a post thumbnail in this image, I can do that right here. And this is all native to WordPress, so when I update it to the latest version, which includes a whole new uploader, it just cascaded over. I didn't have to manage anything separate, or it's very much integrated with the core, which is really important. And then below, I also have like a full visual editor, which is basically the same thing you see up here. So it's a uh, another what you see is what you get editor. And what I've done here is I've just kind of slimmed down what options you have. So that was just purely a customization, just to keep people from screwing things up. So um, these are just a couple options. You can basically do whatever you want. If you want to pull the jQuery UI library in here and create some calendars, you can do that. And if you want to create sliders, you can do that. The nice thing about this Metabox setup is it's kind of just enough. It's like the footwork. And then if you want to add in other cool form fields that you see in jQuery libraries or JavaScript libraries, you can do that. It's just whatever you want to include in your plugin that you're leaving. So now that we kind of get an idea of how this works, you can see all these different fields in here. Um, you know how you set them up. You know how you create a template. We can look at a live example of something that I would actually use this for to manage. So if I go to the um, front end of the site, and I go to this team page, we have like a pretty common page that I've seen on like a lot of sites, right? You have team bios, like management bios. And you have like really influential people that you put on these <laughs> team bio pages, right? So you put yourself first, then you put some, some other people on there. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, in my experience, really common. Sometimes uh, it's better to use post site to do this. If you need like an individual page for each of these people, it's probably better to use post site. But sometimes you just want all the people listed on one page in a nice grid. And if you do, this setup will work really well for it. So in the back end, this is what this looks like. It uses this tool. It basically has this feature that's built into this meta box class. It's like an add another feature where you can create groups of fields that you can then duplicate as you need. Right? So right now I have four profiles. That's a lot of fields. But what if the client wanted like 12? Do I just create 12 or 20 and leave them empty? That's really funny. Right? Um, and I've seen that done a lot where you have like, you know, maybe eventually they'll want 10, so you just create 10 sets of fields here, and then they fill them in with any of them. This kind of add another and repeatable field group setup will basically allow you to add another person if you want. So if I want to add another person in here, and I don't have an image for them, You can do that, and now there are profiles down here. So now when I go to the page, unless I screwed something up, we should see another person down there. So you don't have an image, it doesn't quite look right, but if you had an image, you would kind of drop into this Twitter bootstrap setup. And you'll see it so then if you want to remove them, you just go down, you remove their bio, and hit OK. 
So this is cool. Um, it's easy to manage groups of fields. It, there's a lot of possibilities for this. I've used this to manage columns, right? So I've done like column layouts where you might have a three column, you might have six columns, and then you give them a drop down to select how many columns they want that to be split into. And if they select two, then they have three rows of two columns. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities with these field groups, and I use them a lot. So let's look at the code for this, because it seems like it might be kind of hard to do, but it's actually really easy. So if I go back into my Metabox templates here, I go to Biographies. This is the template that I'm using to create that Metabox. So inside of this template, what I have is basically my form table. Um, and you don't have to use this structure that I use if you end up exploring this on your own and you go to the author's website, he just basically uses paragraphs between to section off his fields. The reason I use all these crazy tables in here is because it sort of taps into a lot of styles that WordPress already has set up. So with kind of minimal effort, my forms look similar to WordPress's, and then all I do is give them a little bit of glue back on their border, and they look nice. So, um, and then when WordPress upgrades, like the, there was a recent, I think it was 3.0, Six that kind of had some design improvements. It just kind of cascades into it. So all you really have to do to basically create these multiple field groups is is basically um, included in this one line here. So line 13 basically says uh, while the meta box and this MV here is basically a shorthand for meta box. Whenever you're inside of a template, you can use this to basically do anything you want with the class. So basically, it says while we have fields, um, and there's multiple fields for this, open up a group, and everything in between, everything inside of this while loop here, all the way down to here, will be repeatable. So all you really need is have fields in multi, group open, and the group close. And then you just put it in a loop, and that's it. So it's really easy to do. The only other thing you need to know how to do is to add the buttons. Right? So we have a button to remove uh, a field group, and we also have a button to add another field group. And to do that, you have to remember the name of your group. So I've sort of labeled this group biographies. And then when you scroll down, you can notice here that the last row is like a, a remove biography button. and uh, Basically, this uses JavaScript to pull that to pull that biography off the page and you basically delete it. So, in order to make this function with the class, you just need to add this one class onto the button link. That's it. And by adding do delete onto the button, it will function and remove that whole section. Right? That's it. All the JavaScript is going to get behind the scenes. And then this is just purely for styling. And then the other thing you need to add is really similar. It's just another class on the Add Biography link. So that's the button that we have at the bottom that lets us drop another field group in there. And all you need to put is do copy and then a dash, and then you basically have the name of your group, the name of your field group, which is Biography, and that's it. Um, so the code to output this is pretty simple as well. If I go into um, the template that I use. It's a little bit, it looks a little bit overwhelming at first. Part of it is that my resolution is pretty, pretty large right now, so usually I'm online. But essentially what I'm doing here is I'm just running a, a, a loop similar to like the WordPress loop, where I just say, hey, while we have fields in these groups, or while we have groups of fields, let's go through each of them and sanitize the data. So first check if we have a name, if we do have a name, let's we'll pull anything that's nasty out of it, and then save it, and then output it in this, this template down here, which is uses a bootstrap to make it look kind of nice. And then the same thing with like our content area, which is like rich text. I use um, WP Texturize and WP Auto P, which are built-in WordPress functions to just automatically add line breaks and automatically add like nice special characters with the content. And then at the bottom I just close it, and that's pretty much it. Uh, 
on. And I mean, the real benefit to this, in my opinion, is that the, the first time you create like a bio page like this, you can just copy and paste it over the next project if you want. It's easy to reuse. Um, it's just a matter of changing out your field names, changing out of your templates, <coughs> and um, defining your defining your meta boxes and setting them up. So, let's see where I am for slides. I think I'm way ahead of myself. All right, so field types and features. We pretty much went through most of these, but you can basically <coughs> create text inputs, check boxes, radios, um, drop downs, text areas, media library uploaders, which we saw, which we used for the uh, Obama picture and the Mark Zuckerberg picture. And then you can create rich text editors, new field groups, which we looked at. You can also, I didn't set it up for this demo because I only had a couple days to prepare, but um, that's actually really not an excuse. It's really easy to do. But you can basically set this up so that if you want to drag and drop these boxes to control the ordering, you can do that. You just have to jump into, um, I think it's like one or two lines of JavaScript to do it. You just turn on the jQuery UI functionality, and then you can basically drag and drop these boxes on top of each other. And then you can update and the order updates in the template. So a couple like real world examples of things that I've done with this. Um, we looked at the team bio example. I mentioned doing content columns. And there's also an ebook and a landing page that I that I have that uses these. So this is on a site, Citizen Schools, that's a client of mine. They, the whole site is a multi-site WordPress install. And they basically manage these crazy columns throughout their whole site where they split content down into two, three, four, or five columns. Right on this page, they're basically using it for, um, they're basically using it for like leadership team pages. So, all they really have to do here um, to add a new leadership bio is come down here, add a column, and then in the column, put in all their fields, which look like this. And there's a whole bunch of other features. There's basically like a pop-up bio that they use, which shows the full bio. Um, this is kind of like steroids. This is probably the most intense out of box I've ever created in a theme. But um, you can kind of see the benefits of it. So like here, they can see all the row numbers, like row, five, row four, C, C5, and they can drag and drop the order of them. And then when they hit update, it saves. So this is kind of like an extreme, but they love it. It works really well. Let's say we switch this to four. It would drop this full page down to four columns, and it would just stretch the fit responsibly. So I mean, it took a little bit of time to set up, but they use it. 20 or 30, no, probably like 20 places across like three or four sites, and they love it. And um, it's intuitive enough for them where they're moderately technical. They have some editors that work with it, but I really didn't need to describe to them how to use it. They could just go in and kind of figure it out. I had to explain the, the R1, C1 stuff a little bit, but other than that, I mean, that's pretty priceless to be able to just set something up that manages such a complex layout and have a client just go in and pick it up without pulling their hair out or trying to figure out how to use a short code or some other crazy like that. So um, there's one other demo in here. There's an ebook landing page, which is much more basic. Uh, we basically have these landing pages here for ebooks. And on this landing page, you can manage a couple things like a quote, a citation, a person's position, the company. And you can do that all with the meta box. And you can also manage like different email marketing lists. So the list ID here goes into exact target for different campaigns, and they track and segment different campaigns. Uh, you can control the form title. I don't remember what that is. I think that might be the call-out title on the right. You can control the call-out description, a pop-up description, and then a PDF download. So this is basically like a gated ebook, which I don't really necessarily agree with, but basically have to fill out your email in order to download the ebook, and once you do, you're redirected to this file automatically. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I think that was a little faster than I anticipated, but yeah, that's, that's it.
Does anyone have any questions? How do you validate input? How do I validate input? Yeah. So in this demo, I really didn't do it, but I would use like the data sanitization and. So they're built into the class. There's some of, some of it's built in, but it's not. It doesn't use all the functions that it probably should. Like I don't think it uses like the escape text area field. You could enter some. You could enter some nasty code into a text area, and it might break the view of it inside of the admin. But uh, right, but I mean that would be something you would put into the template, right? The admin template. Yeah. But I, I mean more yeah, along the lines of say that you have some field and you it needs to be a number, an integer. Yeah. Between zero and ten. Yeah. Uh, how would how would you validate the number? So you could do like I mean that's part of the nice thing about it. You could bring in like JavaScript to do it. To validate uh, JavaScript. Well, so say that I don't trust my users. If you don't trust your users, you could basically just run server side validation. So when they when they hit the save button. Use an action to check if it's a number. If it's not a number, you can give them an error message. Right. It's so not built in. It's not part class. of the class. Yeah, it's not part of the class. But you could extend it, probably. Uh, what if you wanted to copy some of the, the meta box information that you had on a page to another page? Would you have to retype it in? You wouldn't. You could probably use something that would export it. You could probably write something, but out of the box, yeah, you have to kind of move it, move it over. Or if you wanted to, you could set up like a duplicate post. There's a duplicate post plugin that works pretty well. And if you duplicated a post, if you wanted a team bios page and you wanted to start with everything you already had, you could duplicate the post, start from that, and work your way out that. But yeah, that's a good question. There's a downside. If you um, if you're moving your site, can you export that and then site and all just be there? You can, yeah. So this is all it's all stored in custom fields. So it's stored as an array inside custom fields. So if you were to export, if you were to go to tools export and export your whole site, it's preserved. Anyone else? About how long did it take you to Figure out what tools you needed and get the, all the factors that you wanted for that end solution with those bios. Is that a lot of pre planning involved before you got to programming it? Um, two hours? Two hours, but that included a little bit of styling. Like I pulled in Google Fonts to clean it up and stuff. But pure PHP functionality is probably like 45 minutes. So the JavaScript, uh, the way I usually do it is I'll, I'll like just include an admin JavaScript layer on my theme. So I'll just like use I think it's wp admin scripts. Don't quote me on that, but there's one that's specifically for the admin, and you can use that. That's usually what I use to pull in like an admin.js file, and then inside there I set up like the drag and drop and anything else you want. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, listening. Hope everyone liked it. Do we have another talk? Or?